Hello, Alex here at Legacy Electrical. In this video, I'm going to explain a little bit about RCDs and what to do if they keep tripping or won't reset. First of all, you're going to want to know if it's an RCD or a circuit breaker. There's two different kinds of RCDs generally. There's this kind, which is an RCD that all it does is test for leakage current. And there's these ones, which is an RCBO. It also tests for overload of the circuit. And that's different from this kind, which is just a circuit breaker. So the way you tell is the RCD is usually twice as wide as everything else on the circuit. And it has a little button here. This is a test button. The RCBO is generally thinner, at least the modern ones are. And it also has a test button. If this is tripping, it's not easy to figure out if it's tripping from a current overload or from a leakage. An electrician can work it out. And this one, it doesn't have the test button and it, it just says C10, that means it's a 10 amp circuit breaker. So if it's one of these trimping, then it's too much current. The next thing you'll want to know is what does an RCD do? So this is a safety device meant for protecting humans and animals from electric shock. It is not meant for protecting the wires of the installation. How it does this is it measures the amount of current flowing through the phase conductor and the neutral conductor. And if it senses any current missing, which means a current leakage, then it interrupts the power supply. This le leaking current could potentially be throwing through a human body, which is of course dangerous. So these can save lives. This is a 30 milliamp one, which means it will trip if it detects a leakage of 30 milliamps. A 10 milliamp one is used in schools and medical areas. They're, they're a lot more sensitive. You get a lot more nuisance tripping, but they do offer additional protection. So at this stage, let's assume you've worked out that it is an RCD that's tripping. There's a few degrees of RCD faults you could have. You could have one where it just won't reset at all. This is actually easier to fault find because you get a faster feedback on your fault finding. The intermittent faults where the electrician turns up and the fault doesn't occur while they're there, but then happens after they leave, those ones are a lot harder to fix. So the next question is, how do you go about fixing it? And do you need to call an electrician? If the fault is caused by an appliance, then you can work it out yourself without needing an electrician. However, if there's a fault with the wiring and the building, then you'll have to get an electrician to come and have a look. The first thing you can do is go to the switchboard. And usually the way it's wired is there'll be the RCD and then the three breakers to the right of it, or the ones to the right of it until there's the next RCD. Uh, usually it's three. Those ones are wired through that RCD. So if you turn all three of those breakers off, you should be able to reset the RCD. What will likely happen is when you turn any one of them on, the fault will trip. This is because all of the neutrals are connected together. So when one of them has a, an earth to neutral fault, which creates a current leakage, then the neutrals from all of them will send current back down through that earth tripping the RCD. So what you have to do to figure out if it's an appliance or not is physically unplug all of the appliances or at least the faulty one from the circuit. So you may have to unplug everything in your house, but if you know uh, which circuits are losing power, you can focus only on the circuits which are losing power when the RCD trips because those are the ones on that circuit. So usually it's a kettle causing this. So you can start by unplugging your kettle and seeing if you reset the breaker in it it fixes it. Uh, it could be a fan, it could be a number of appliances. Um, so you physically unplug the devices and and then it should be able to reset after that. If it doesn't reset, then there's a problem with the wiring and you'll have to call an electrician. If it does reset, then you go around plugging things back in one by one until it trips. Uh, and once, once it's tripped again, then you, you could do it a couple times to ensure this is the appliance causing it. Uh, if it's a kettle, the, the best thing to do is to buy a new one. Uh, often it's not worth repairing things, but that depends on the item and the cost. So I hope you got some value out of that. If it wasn't caused by an appliance, then you will need to ring an electrician. If you're in Auckland, you can give me a call. The business is called Legacy Electrical. It's pretty easy to look up. Or you can ring any local registered electrician and they'll be able to sort you out.